I'm gonna put a timer here because the watch has no battery. Okay. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome here. Uh, do you guys understand English? Okay. So I'll try to help with some of the translations, but actually tonight it's in English. And I'm very happy of uh, being here one more time uh, with this opportunity for learning from you and for sharing what I learned. And before we go into the topic of the night, it's a very uh, sensitive and inspiring topic. I'd like to, uh, us to invite ourselves to apply some concepts for any learning that we can do when we go to any kind of religious temple and this is the place. Whenever we are studying uh, something for the soul, some guidelines that could help us really to take uh, advantage of the learnings, especially as spiritualism center. So many parts of the Bible, and even I believe the Old Testament, would have a passage when Jesus is asked what's the greatest commandment, which means the greatest exercise. And in this one, which is in Luke, uh, the Pharisee asked him, and Jesus replies to the question, to the question What's written the law? And the Pharisee answers, saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. So let's put this in a, a more visual model and explore a little bit what this can mean for our learning tonight. So with all thy mind with all the understanding um, means the reflection the uh, using of our, our reasoning of our intellectual uh, power and with all thy heart is the moral parts the emotions so how we feel the teachings and with all thy soul we can think as uh, for example when um, so I have a friend that he really loves to watch the stars and to watch the moon and the planets. Um, he's very passionate by astronomy. Like, so what is what would you find in the house of somebody who is passionate for astronomy? That who's the person's soul is astronomy. And a telescope, right? And was he forced to have one? No, he chose to. So this is a, a metaphor for understanding that the soul is what we want uh, on, on this on this on this model. So it, it's kind of easier to understand the mind, the heart. And then when we say with all thy soul, what what's the meaning of that? All thy soul, like it's something that we want and we choose. And did he, this friend, acquired the knowledge about astronomy, astronomy? Um, just by because he had the knowledge, or what did he have to do to acquire that? Study. study. And what else? Just study? He, he goes there, there and he watches the sky, right? Okay. So the same thing, it's an exercise. And if you think about athletes, how do they get so good in the sports? Practice. They practice. Okay. How often do they practice? every day so this is kind of like the understanding of of the with all thy soul um, just for those who came right after this slide I was talking about before starting the lesson of the night which is sex uh, the text of Emmanuel our daily bread and just some kind of useful guidelines for learning not just this for any kind of learning of spiritual content so and so before we go to the last one which is I think it's a little bit uh, different um, what, what happens if we come here, for example, to jazz or to any other place, to any temple, uh, Igreja, Santa any other church, and we are only using this dimension of the soul, the mind? So what, what could be the consequence, the not good ones? Not internalizing. Maybe we become, we become theoretical and we don't practice what we learn because we think it. We might be pointing fingers and think, oh, I'm learning this is for my mom or this is for my husband. And so that's not the, the purpose of our learnings when we go and study these kind of things. Um, it's not just to rationalize. 
But what happens if we only go to the emotional side? Can we really properly direct our emotions without understanding the why, understanding the consequences? So perhaps we would be living here doing things, not because I know what I'm doing, but because I was told to do. And that's the blind faith that most of us that are here, we don't accept blind faith anymore. But what happens if I do reflect, I understand, I agree, and I feel like I want to do that, but I don't do anything. Did, did this learning help us somehow? And ultimately, it may give us more responsibility because now we know we're not doing anything. So, and now the last, the last one that I put it as last, I thought the strength, because I see this as the understanding our limitation because we're not pure and perfect yet. And so it is important for us in this exercise to understand where we are. So the athlete, when he starts or she starts program, needs to know, okay, I'm on the basics, so I have to focus on the basics. I have to do the exercise and then go advancing. So knowing our limitations is also very important for the learning. And so that's why I'm gonna, based on this, make an invitation, convite, um, for us to do this in a review. So in general, uh, we kind of disclaim that if you are not in full control of leadership, maybe in bad, then it's better to the eyes open. Um, otherwise, invite us all to close our eyes and ask yourself, in the to share with anyone, this is only for you. What are your evil tendencies regarding sex? Why some of us was mass tendencies in relation to sex? So connect to yourself in essence. Avoid any masking behavior. Give yourself permission to ask this question. Okay. So if you're practicing this exercise, if the answer comes even before we close our eyes, we already know. And if not, if the answer didn't come, just pay attention to the um, So kind of ask everybody to open your eyes again. And we're gonna use this, the learnings of this night. For each one of us, we're gonna use for this, what you learn, what you already know about your evil tendencies. And remember, no judgment, no condemning, and we, we're going to cover these parts too, more towards the end. So this is how we split the, the learnings of the night. Um, so again, for those who missed, we on lesson 94 of our daily bread, um, I forgot the name of Portuguese, Pomos? Pomosso, Pomosso. Pomosso, né? Também tem Pomosso também. Também tem Eu acho que conheço como Pomosso. So that's 94. And I brought some contents of this also from the Life in Sex, which I don't think we have in English, Did it sex? Uh, but there are other uh, references we can give later in this area. And an invitation from the Bible, Jesus, uh, when the men were about to throw the rock on the woman who committed adultery. So we got to cover uh, some of these parts. So talk about the divinity of the creative power. So, and then think about once we understand a little bit more how we can direct this creative power that we all have, um, thinking about choices and consequences, and then we go to Jesus' invitation. So, starting with the first thing first, and Alan Kardec in his first book, the first question was, what is God? Does anybody remember the answer? Uh, there's one thing missing, yeah, that, those two things I think are part of the first part of the Okay, 
creator of all things. Creator of all things, exactly. Supreme intelligence. Supreme intelligence. The first cause of all things. So I wanted to um, reflect about two parts of the expression. First, when we, we say supreme intelligence, so this evil tendency that we bring, does he or she not know about it? Not know that we have those tendencies? Or does he know? He knows. Now, that's kind of tricky, I think, for all of us. And if it's the supreme creator, first cause of all the things, did he created us with those evil tendencies? No. Hmm? So he created us simple and ignorant. Yeah, this is what's in spirit book. So he created us simple and ignorant. So how come we have those things? He developed those things um, for people or he developed those things. And how come we I was already born with those things? You were born? Yeah. Like this life, right? Yeah, okay, okay. That's we're going the same direction. So we 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 were given uh what? Uh what kind of permission we had created? Free will. Free will. Mm -hmm. So we made the choices of creating these and it's not just one time, it's like we do once, we do again, and we receive some invitations to fix and we don't and then we do again. And do again, again, and next slide. And so eventually, by repetitive doing this and with intention of those misdirected emotions, then they become those evil tendencies that we carry. So Emmanuel uh, brings in the text that the planetary achievements provided by the Lord by means of sexual emotions. So if those tendencies were our own creation, how about sex? Is this created by God or by man? By God. We can see in nature and sex is responsible for the reproduction of the species. But when we go to mankind, is this just for reproduction of the species? No. So here are some examples that Emmanuel brings because although we are in a biological body, also put our body, um, we are also moral beings. We have, uh, we have something more than just the body. We have a mission. So that part of Facebook that says that we were created simple and ignorant, but God gave us a mission. So what was the mission of the simple and ignorant beings? To evolve. To learn and evolve. To evolve? Evolution? To evolve where? To evolve. Towards God. And they said in the first book to our mission is for us to build and find our pure and perfect happiness. And this is happens when we get towards God, that we can be one with Him. And so this is kind of like the, the background of, of the moral part. And here are some examples that Emmanuel brought in the book. Uh, motherhood and fatherhood. Um, so who here have or had a mother and a father biological, even if you didn't meet them? Everyone. So thanks to sex, we are all here. So we are incarnated here. If it wasn't because of sex, we would be in the spiritual world. We wouldn't have a body. So this is a, a sacred part of nature and so important because reincarnation is something, uh, a word of the divine alphabet that helps us to reach our mission because we cannot be in just one life. One life is too short for the eternal being. So then we have we have a long time and we have so many opportunities to develop that. And reincarnation is the door that opens us for doing this work and for the regeneration because every time we incarnate we have a chance to almost like start fresh. And then comes the mission of the motherhood and the fatherhood. So for mothers and fathers, what are the divine virtues or what are the virtues that they can develop themselves if they do follow their duties of the motherhood and fatherhood? But in that, but in that, duties. So what are the virtues? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Patience. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, what else? So good, so love. Good. What kind of love? Uh, the, uh, what is the word? Unconditional? unconditional yes. yes. So we don't, we may not have unconditional love, but through motherhood and fatherhood, we get the impulse to develop that. Because the babies, they need that unconditional love. Otherwise, oh, I don't want to clean or I don't want to take care of you right now. No, they need that. If you don't have the unconditional love, they would die. Patience, unconditional love. Anybody wants to say something else? Something that you think that you can Tolerance. So, thanks to motherhood and fatherhood, we have opportunity to develop these virtues in a better way, in a more profound and faster way. Forgiveness, exactly. That's, that's another virtue that mothers and fathers, they, they can develop. It doesn't mean they all do, but they can develop through motherhood and fatherhood. And we said creation and reproduction of the bodies, which is also the same in the animal world. And stimuli for work and regeneration. So I'm going to tell a story about this regeneration. What does that mean? Um, so there's a story about Mar Marli. Uh, it's a real story. She had two kids, and one was three years old, the other one was three months old. And she was feeling like a monster because she didn't know why or how, but she had this natural anger, hate for her little baby. And when she was breastfeeding him, she just wanted to hurt him or throw him out of the window. And she was feeling guilty and she was feeling like a monster. And then she went to therapy. At therapy, she learned about reincarnation and then. Since she couldn't find the explanation of that hate, the baby didn't do anything to her. And she was, a, she was told that this could have been best life experience, some any of the best. And it made sense to her. And now back to the beginning when we talk about God. If uh, in, the, in the Gospel, uh, according to Spiritism, the Spirit's book, and Emmanuel text too, uh, says that on this planet, most of the families will have these encounters of enemies of the past. It could be husband and wife, it could be mother and son, son and mother or father and daughter, father and son, etc. Brothers, brothers and laws. So, would God put us close to our enemies for us to hate each other even more and even kill each other? Is that the purpose? No. So, why wouldn't He do that? To learn. To learn. But if you why do you have that feeling? Because when you are in a temple, the thing is, it's already one step ahead. Yeah. How come? Because in a family, there's a, a blood connection, plus you're kind of like supposed to love each other. <laughs> you're a family, so a family is an institution of love. Even though you bring things from the past, but it helps. It should so be. Not it should always. Be. Yes, I should, did the, the blood part, I didn't understand how come. The blood part, can that make a difference? Because it's the same blood we will hate that. Or no, not, the, not, not in that not the sense. Blood. No, not in that sense. But as a, as a society. Society, yes. Uh, yes, when, yes. You know, uh, a family um, unit, uh, you know, we learn that we're supposed to love each other. So it does help. It, it, it does. And also, yeah. it's like when you have a baby, you, it's very hard not to love a baby. The baby is so cute and stuff, and that's why it's easier. The baby needs you. And it needs you. Rejection. Yeah. Rejection. Hmm? Rejection. 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 <laughs> In that brain, mm -hmm. you can yeah, so, and in this case, so I'll continue and maybe we can cover uh, more on that uh, later on. Um, so one important fact that I don't know if anybody mentioned, but it's connected to what we talked about before, is that we only come like with enemies of the past in the same family. We live to pass out, we live in We only come with them. No, that's not what oh, I meant. Oh, oh, oh. I'm <laughs> saying that we only. <laughs> can't come with them nearby us because we have already the resources to learn to love. Not because we should love, because we don't really love by obligation, do we? 
can we forgive someone because we have to do? That's a, a big danger for many religious people, us, is that we intellectually learn about forgiveness as important and we learn about the consequences and other virtues like love. And then we think that we have to love. And this is very dangerous because we end up building the mask. So we mask ourselves, we hide ourselves from the feelings. So we still have the, the evil tendencies inside, but we are masked, you know, I forgive because I have to. And then when the problem comes again, all the hate comes back. And so we, we keep on this uh, vicious, vicious Better. cycle. Yeah, pattern, vicious cycle. Like we hide, we think that, oh, I'm perfect now, I, I forgave. And then the a, a next uh, situation comes and then we put the hate again. And so the exercise of like we were looking at the first slide, it's not to hide itself, it's to face the truth and then the truth will set us free. And not just because we recognize that we'll set us free, but then it's, it's an important step. And then we're gonna learn the other part of the truth, which is our future, which is perfection. So we are perfectible. And then we can use this inner resource of perfection to build up. It reminds me the devout Frankl's history about his sister. Mm -hmm. um, I I was in the um, fields. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, her sister, his sister, uh, hated her uh, her father, uh, and he oh, she didn't know why. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, with the development orientation and spirituality orientation, she, she discovered that uh, her, her feels uh, from uh, past lives, uh, and then she she could uh, um, how to modify it. She could change uh, Yeah, she could change like herself you. and forgive. Yeah. Okay, so very good. So let me, thanks for sharing that. So this story is very similar. So in her case, um, she was willing to forgive and she was uh, offered the option of the past life regression. And so this is a uh, disclaimer. Spiritism doesn't recommend us to do that. Um, there is the reason why the consequence is because you might go back to the past and find things that you don't know how to deal with. So if she wasn't willing to forgive, it would have been worse because now she, she would have the baby and she would know who that was and what he did that would be even harder to forgive, um, more challenging to forgive. So she was in a therapy, so if you do, don't do it for curiosity, do it for a serious reason and with a serious guidance and experience with therapies. In her case, she found that she was a young woman in Spain back to middle age and she, she met the seducer guy and made promises of love, promises of marrying her, eternal love. And Emmanuel says on TV Sex, Life and Sex, that when we make a sexual invitation to someone, we become responsible for their feeling of safety. And also says many parts of the book, uh, can we harm someone else without harming ourselves? In terms of the immortals, the immortal spirit, can we? So whenever we harm, we harm somebody else, machucamos alguém, we harm ourselves back. And so in this case, he got her pregnant, and he quit. And at that time, family didn't have those morals that make you sad, and they didn't accept her. Even nowadays, it, it, it happens. So they put her in the street, pregnant, and she ended up being accepted in the house for prostitutes. Um, they accepted her, but then later they wanted to charge back because she didn't have any money to pay. And because she was very beautiful, she was kind of socially forced to become a prostitute. She acquired sickly, and she hated the man who caused her death, and she died young with that hate. And they started continuing the spiritual world, which is not the, um, not the scope for this. But later on, she decided to forgive and to come in, be incarnate be, and take that spirit as her son to develop the forgiveness, to develop love. So this is an exercise, like the other example, um, that might be for the whole life. Um, and 
if she if she's choosing if God gave her the opportunity because she can, she may not die loving both kids the same way because she already loved the older one, but she might be able to forgive him doing this exercise daily exercises. So this is the summary of the first part, divinity of the creative power, and we already talked about choices and consequences. Um, So, I'll bring just some context uh, of the book. Emmanuel says, humans have desecrated this holy place, populating its altars with the ghosts of the centuries. So we have the divine power of the creation. Like our father, father is the ultimate creator, and he gave us uh, as his image and similarity. So we, we are invited to be co-creators. And we may use this, can we, can we use sex to abuse others or ourselves? We can. We have the free will. But like Emmanuel says, those are the goals of licentiousness, um, libertinage, phantasma libertinage. So why goals? Because, well, we have a free will. I'm going to do something to enjoy the pleasure of the moment. And I'm creating a harm for myself in the future and for somebody else. So I'm creating an opportunity in the future to regenerate those emotions that were misguided and the hurt that I did to somebody else. Like the example of uh, Mahli and her baby. Humans in their selfishness exchange it, this precious gift, gift from God, for absurd animalistic experiences, thereby generating cruel trials for themselves. So we saw the example of the consequence. So the question is, why are we acting this way why we human beings, spirits that are incarnated in uh, this biological body, why are we acting, I almost gave the answer, acting like animals? Because people don't know that there are immortal spirits too. The consequence is to us. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, okay. So if we say it's instinct, then it's God's responsibility because it's instinct was given by God. But she, she, gave, she gave the answer, at least the answer that we wanted for this context. Can you say again? Uh, lots of humans don't know that they have you know, very flesh and very mortal spirits, so they only think about the material, holistic pleasures. Not knowing that we are mortal spirits. Actually, I would add to that, that it's knowing that enough, knowing that we are mortal spirits. No, you have to want to So. If you, I know the mortal spirit, but I don't feel like one, then I end up living like the same way I lived before, because it's intellectual. You got, we gotta feel like mortal spirits. The moment that we feel like mortal spirits, then our choices changes, and then connects to Emmanuel saying that fundamentally blind of spirits, so acting as if we're not spirits, we're just people in in bodies, animal bodies. We in general, have not managed to discover in sex one of the most sublime reasons for our existence. And talking about our master in terms of spirituality, Jesus, um, in the book On the Way to the Light, A Caminho da Luz, Emmanuel talks that Jesus was working from the creation of Earth and talks about him and his workers working through all the geological times and all the evolution of the species on our planet and, and the history of mankind. So he's been working with the creative power as co-creator of our planet and of the entities here for billions of years. Um, as we know, Jesus in earth incarnated himself and he did not get married, he did not have kids. Um, so did he not have this creative power, creative impulse as he was he incarnated? Did he have this creative power as incarnated as a man? Yes, yes, of course he had, right? So he, he, he is the co-creator of the planet. He cannot shut down this power inside of him, but he channeled it in a different way. And that can help us as, a, as example, because if we analyze ourselves, we find those tendencies, those evil tendencies. Then we know that we can channel those, this energy that we have, that we applied mistakenly to the tendencies. Now we can apply to 
all the types of work, they are not necessarily sex. So here are some uh, examples that Vidi Sexu, Emmanuel says, responsibly creating a family so we can apply the generation, uh, the creative power to help raise kids, to approximate to them to God, uh, to benevolent works of culture, sensitivity, and we can think about uh, artists that they come uh, alive, they live alone, and they dedicate all their lives just to their creative work. And same thing for science and works of progress. Um, or community work, like we have example of Chico Xavier, he didn't get married, but he wrote more than 400 books and wrote more than 10,000 letters helping moms um, to have some notice, some information for, of, uh, for their kids that, that had discarnated. And besides the other ones that we already mentioned earlier, we can use that for self-construction. So if we found that we have these evil tendencies, we can use our creative power to transform them into virtues. So the last part, um, I, maybe I'll put this part later. Um, I will skip to the next part. So here is saying not prohibition, but education. But it's kind of like a program. That's the, that's the summary of the book, the, the book Life and Sex. Not impose a business, but dignifying usage. Respect others and to yourself. Not in discipline, but self-control. So we can feel the pattern here that not the extremes, not impose yourself to restriction, but self-control. And not the licentious impulse, but responsibility. And so the last parts we connect to Jesus' invitation. So there's a story that this woman was caught in adultery. She, she was cheating on her husband. She was very needy. He was uh, giving he, doing his part and responsibility for the relationship. And, and she, in her side, she had th this uh, internal lack of development of self-love. And then the Pharisees, they, they, they wanted to trick Jesus. They all have, were ready to throw her the rocks. And back then, Pharisees, um, people like us, they were very good and have their masks of perfection. They were very good and do the exterior practice, to look good, to do the things that you look good and you go to heaven. Kind of like that idea. And Jesus, that knew the truth, was uncovering the truth. And, and was teaching that it's the inner practices, not the exterior ones. So they wanted to eliminate Jesus because they didn't want to change nothing. They wanted to keep the state of the art because they had the secondary benefits. Um, they had the power, they have people believing they were pure. And those Pharisees were testing Jesus, saying, Jesus, you, the law tells us to throw rocks on this woman, and you tell me that we should forgive her. So what should we do? And then there is a, a spiritual tradition, I believe it's Amelia Rodriguez's spirit, that says that he was writing on the sand. Actually, I think this part from the Bible, but she says what she, he was writing. So he was writing devices, the evil tendencies of each of the Pharisees in that group. And as they seen from the oldest to the youngest, they start to move away. They move away because they become conscious at that moment when Jesus said, whoever doesn't have not committed any sin, throw the first block. What do, what do we think? I think that if they became conscious that time, they would have not thrown the rock, but they would have become followers of Jesus or would come to him to know more. But instead they moved away because they were fearful of getting caught. But Jesus was not planning to to have them get caught because he was right on the sand. Sand you can go later and erase very easily. And so the woman was, how was she? How was she at the moment that they started to leave? Which, was she dancing? She was on the floor, right? She was embarrassed, crying. And then Jesus asks her, um, that's the question here. Where are those thy accusers, seus accusadores? Where are they? Have not men condemned thee? So nobody condemned you? And that's interesting because wasn't Jesus there uh, watching 
him. So he, he knew the answer to the question, but why did he ask her? She could recognize. To give a lesson. Give a lesson, yes. What kind of lesson? <laughs> Time off. Time off for the lesson. Because she still had the accuser inside herself. So, uh, not her conscience, because the conscience doesn't accuse. Jesus is the, is the model for our conscience. But because she was embarrassed, she was ashamed, and she was condemning herself in guilt. So, this is a lesson for us because Jesus says, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So Jesus said for us not to condemn ourselves. So once we realize all those evil tendencies, how we misuse the creative power that God gives us, and now that we know, let us not sin anymore. It doesn't mean that, okay, now I know, now I'm perfect. It's not like that. But this is the attitude that we can bring every time. And we do the daily work. We start to work on it, we start to work on it when we fail, we go and we reflect and not condemning ourselves but not excusing either. And then we go and we use our creative power to transform and to ourselves and to create the virtues. So this is um, reviewing what we talked about, the divinity of the creative power. Choices and consequences, we saw some uh, very nice example, actually more than one example on um, how these consequences can bring us some suffering. And this is an invitation to deal with that. And it's interesting because Emmanuel said that why for all the vices of humankind, why did Jesus choose a specific sex area to use the sentence? Those who doesn't have the sin throw the first one. And then the argument is that on our planet, it's very rare to have somebody who had not committed sin on this area. So this is for all of us to choose to accept ourselves, develop uh, tolerance to ourselves, and to make choices to develop a new pathway. So thank you, everybody. Um, mainly, uh, we recommend reading Life and Sex. There's also uh, Sex and Destiny, Sex and Obsession, I believe, other books. Um, and we, we brought some contents from the, this, this is in Portuguese. Uh, Sexualidade e Saúde Espiritual, um, that's been translated to English. It's a very uh, interesting book that kind of up, updates to um, some of our current questions that we have in this area. And let's do our homework, study more. I would suggest that doing our passing, because we are going to the passing now, uh, which is a uh, good opportunity for everyone, it's not mandatory, to, to reflect upon everything that we were brought tonight uh, by Emmanuel and by Kardec and Jesus and try to apply to ourselves. So use the passive time for this meditation time for reflection and connecting to God, but not to develop mediumship. That's not the right place, okay? So thank you.